from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hey folks, it's Rosemary. I am in Wheeling uh, at an encampment. I'm hanging out with the folks from Project Hope. I wanna show you uh, some of the things we've got going on. Um, this is a tent. Uh, there are three here. Uh, and this isn't the first one we've seen today. This one seems to be vacant, um, at least for now. Uh, and I found a pride flag sitting in the dirt that I gave out not too long ago at our, at our pride festival. It's kind of bittersweet. I remember when we had our house fire in 2010, we were homeless as a family uh, for months and months. And it was, uh, it was jarring and it was, you know, embarrassing. I was 16 years old. I, I remember it like nothing else. And I don't think I would have told anybody what was going on um, during that time of our lives. And so I couldn't imagine reaching the point where you would tell anyone. She said somebody cut it. Yeah, they cut the screen. Well, first they just cut the regular door, and then they cut the screen They cut door. that the second time. I mean, why do you think they, retaliation or? We don't do anything to anybody. To see what they can get. Wow. And, and we then, had a lock on our door. At first, like, I, I kind of pulled that off. Yeah. We had a lock on our door. Way. Did they steal anything? Do you know? Everything out of there. Wow. The tablets, the cell phone, like mainly all my clothes, all the expensive stuff we had hidden in our tent. That's unbelievable. So this is everything you have. Everything, everything you absolutely you own. Since we became homeless. To be able to see the way our most vulnerable community members live. It's, uh, it's upsetting, it's humbling, um, but it makes me even more determined to uh, create a city where uh, we care for and uh, seek to help and support uh, even our most vulnerable folks. If you care about your community, if you care about the people uh, that surround you, you cannot pretend like you're making a difference unless you are. Community is vital. It's something I realized uh, we are losing. Encouraging folks to be uh, engaged uh, is so vital. We live in a time uh, where folks are, I think, historically disengaged, where people feel like they are not a part of their community, that their voices either don't matter or aren't reflected in their community, which is you know, something that I've experienced, mostly because I've lived a life that has been fraught with you know, trauma and tragedy and uh, experiences that have taught me that you know, with support, anything is possible. Uh, with a community that has your back, uh, anything uh, can be done. So I strive to be as supportive and uh, helpful to people in my community, whether I know them or not, whether they uh, like me or not, uh, which I encounter from time to time. Uh, but I, I realize that most people need support, so just being there is, is pretty vital. I love Wheeling. I, I, I remember distinctly one of the very first times coming into the city from Bridgeport to Wheeling Island, uh, crossing that bridge and uh, seeing, a, seeing a little sign that was rusted and bent that said, The Friendly City. I remember seeing it as a kid, as a 16-year-old, and going, The Friendly City? That's where I am now. And I took it to heart immediately. And I thought, you know, you, you got to sink or swim. You know, you are in high school, you are homeschooled, people think that's weird. You are trans, people think that's definitely weird. So you don't have a choice. You have to dive in, you have to make it worth it. Uh, and you're in the friendly city, so it's possible. It's been the place where I have uh, grown and developed my identity. And I realize now that I have built my own little niche, my own little spot, uh, and I feel comfortable and I feel supported. I haven't seen God around here in a while. It's scared around. Right here. Like human fecal matter. Yes. Yeah. 
Smart. You're, you're just smart. So, do we need public restrooms? I, I think we do. Uh, I had a, and still do, a community organization called Ketchum Community, where we would host uh, community-based uh, discussions and projects in the city. Uh, and picking up litter is one of those. It's one of the easiest to organize and something people really find satisfying. This is where you see some uh, materials of drug use. So I think the best practice for what I've often done is if I find something, I take a picture of it. If I don't have a sharps container, yeah, I remember where it is and I can report it to the health department. Um, well, that's disgusting. Especially with such potent drugs that are in the city. It's gonna all look like that. Um, that's the plan. This is a grassroots campaign. And when you're in the grassroots, you get dirty. But for the young professional, who, hey Sarah, come on in. When a person who grew up in Wheeling, uh, raising a family, working full time, can no longer afford to live in the city they grew up in, something needs to change. When uh, we have folks at record numbers living on our streets and under our bridges without even access to basic restroom facilities after 9 p.m., something needs to change. And when my neighbor, out of work for months, finally finds a job he is capable of and that could propel him out of poverty, he doesn't apply. Because he knows our public transit system does not run after 5 p.m. When these are the stories we're hearing, something needs to change. And call me an idealist, some people do, uh, but I believe that change is the most important and most possible wherever the ground is already broken. It will necessitate an entire community determined to make a difference. And folks, that's us. That is us. Uh, and so I understand that we don't get what we don't fight for, and the friendly city is really worth fighting for. That's what this campaign is about, that's what my life has been about for years, and that is why I'm running for city council. And I hope that you'll help me get there. Thank you. Yeah. I found love in the day, rest in the night. Put my face toward the sun and follow the light. After meeting Rosemary and the whole entire campaign, I immediately fell in love with everything that they were trying to do. Rosemary's ideas not only came from this high hopes place, she actually had a plan underneath it. Wanna lie down in your kitchen, feed a hungry man. Let me stir up a little something, I'll do what I can. Don't send me out into the world feeling low and mean. Put a patch on my wounds, make me clean. Kindness will get us through most of this mess. When it can, I'll find We are filing for Wheeling City Council Ward 3. I'm feeling excited, uh, number one. Um, I'm feeling grateful to have this opportunity, but we are super excited to, to finally kick off officially. All right. All right. And I need a signature and a date right there. Yay, all right. Primarily, it's community engagement. You know, part of this campaign is about being unapologetic and about uh, you know, having tough conversations. Not every conversation that we're having on the trail is easy um, or convenient. And I find that most people who run for office look for convenient conversations, uh, and we're the opposite. We're looking for those inconvenient, awkward, uncomfortable conversations uh, because we know that's where learning happens. I'm not, not a lot of people probably think that it's fun, but I enjoy it. My sick 
somehow um, sense of enjoyment. Uh, I really do like being able to sit and talk yes. with, and I just, with strangers. I was just thinking that um, it would, I think it would be very helpful to try to maintain Jacob Strait, which okay. is the main drag. Right. So, you know, just trying to um, look at more smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. She would be able to answer right. questions so clearly and concisely and so passionately and so empathetically. I never had to coach her once which is very unusual. Even in the nonprofit world, you have to coach people on how to do public speaking and how to do community advocacy. With her, I didn't. It's, it's her. <laughs> like, that's 100% her. Hi folks, this is Rosemary. As I'm sure you've heard, the entire world is responding to the spread of the coronavirus, otherwise known as COVID-19. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your patience. Everyone, uh, stay calm, uh, stay healthy, uh, and stay home, I think is the most important uh, message that we're receiving from the CDC and our state governments. This will not be resolved in a month and a half. No. I, I have a, an inkling of a feeling that we will absolutely postpone the election. Thank you for joining us for 7 News at 11. I'm Logan Raddick. Many other states have done the same over the past few weeks, saying it's not about politics, but protecting public health. 7 News political reporter Mark Curtis has more. The West Virginia primary is moving from Tuesday, May 12th to Tuesday, June 9th, but there will still be a big push to get as many Running for office is the exact opposite of what social distancing asks for. Many of these races are won and lost based solely on the amount of face-to-face -face voter contact a uh, candidate has with their constituents. So uh, we nevertheless plan to persist and persevere through this uh, and kind of re-strategize uh, what we plan to do and how we plan to uh, you know, spread our message um, rather than spread the virus. Off into the sunset, keep it going until again the sun rises. Honey, keep the hope in your eyes. To the sunset, keep it going until Thanks again the night. sun rises. Honey, keep the hope in your eyes. Your yard signing. It's not an it's not a science, it's more of an art of guessing. But my yard sign etiquette is that it, if it if it looks available, it is available. COVID-19 has really thrown us into a position where we have to become creative. Uh, we could not uh, campaign or uh, talk to folks the way we have traditionally. So uh, we have decided that the best way to engage with folks is to continue talking with them, um, just not face to face. I'm sorry, there's no one available to take your call at this time. Please leave your name, get a brief message, and we'll return your call as soon as we can. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hi, my name is Rosemary Ketchum. I'm running for Wheeling City Council in the neighborhoods East Wheeling, South Wheeling, Center. We Wheeling. had to revamp every single thing that we were doing and a lot of it started going towards how can we reach people where they are but make it digital in an area where digital access isn't really readily available. So we did things like making sure her phone number was out there. She has a cell phone number that she gave out to all constituents. And that is her personal cell phone number. She will answer it herself. We're only 12 days from the election and there's only so much left to do. And especially with coronavirus, there's so much less to do. And it is very interesting to, to know that in 12 days I will either have worked for a year um, to get elected or to lose an election. But regardless, I think that we, you know, we don't do this work because, you know, we're in it for ourselves. Uh, and, you know, um, with that said, I'm very confident. Hey folks, it's Rosemary. I just wanted to say hi and check in with everybody uh, and let folks know that I received my ballot. I mean, this is my very first absentee ballot. I've never been able to vote from home. Um, so that was exciting in and of itself. And to know that I am going to be on the ballot and so many other people that I support and am friends with uh, and hopefully will be able to work with in the future, um, it was also exciting to know that I will be able to vote for them. It's one guaranteed vote. That's, I, that's all I know. I mean, I, I remember 
you know, my very innocent self three months ago was, I was thinking, this is gonna be the greatest turnout ever. And I wanna win by a landslide. <laughs> and then I'm like, um, might be the lowest turnout ever. There may be an actual landslide. <laughs> um, it just destroys everything. So, um, how quickly things can change. Had we, had the vote been cast in May, on May 12th, I think I would have, I would have been much more confident. But now that it had kind of gone longer and I still didn't do any canvassing or any grassroots work, which is my bread and butter, it's how I knew I was gonna win. Because that was no longer a part of our strategy, it made me very nervous. I was like, now it's gonna be hard to, to really get out that vote. Running for office was never in the plan, but I've always believed when you see something wrong, you do what you can to fix it. I am writing a kind of loose script for um, a video I'm gonna, I'm gonna record, thanking voters, reminding voters that, you know, today's election day, and um, kind of like closing out the campaign in a way. I think, I mean, if I win, I'll make, I'll definitely, I'll make a string of videos. I'll do an hour long Facebook Live. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, a kind of, kind of thank you. And I mean, if I lose, I'll definitely do another one to say, hey, you know, we didn't get the result we wanted, but we built something great and we're proud of it. Thanks guys, talk soon. Hey folks, it's Rosemary. I hope that you're doing well. Today is election day, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, running for office was never in the plan for me, but I truly believe when you see something wrong, you have to do everything in your power to make it right. So, you know, this campaign has been incredibly fun and fascinating and somewhat convoluted with everything we're experiencing in the world, but it is incredibly worth it. And so win, lose, or draw, I'm so proud of our campaign. But we plan to win. Uh, and I hope that you plan to vote today. Thank you so much for all of your support, for following me through this experience, uh, for donating your time, your energy, your optimism, and your money. It truly means the world. Uh, so I'm incredibly grateful to you. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, and we'll see what happens tonight. Thanks, guys. Today's the day. Oh, throughout the whole campaign, we're like, well, we have months, you know, we have weeks until we have to even think about it. And now it's like, oh, here we are. I feel, I feel good. You know, the results are inevitable, whatever they may be. So uh, there is a point of no return that is kind of calming when you're like, well, that was that. Uh, but I feel, I feel good. The, 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 the strangest thing is having to like consider your whole future within moments. Just to be like, either, my, either I know what my four years look like or I have no idea what my, four, my next four years look like. We got literally 73 votes though. It's 7% reporting. This is a lot. Peggy, my head. I'm ahead. Word three. Where's word three? Right here. Oh. Oh, we are not that far ahead. We're 19 votes ahead. Yeah, Peggy Niebergall has 70 votes. I have 89 votes. This is nerve wracking. Um, so we have 89, almost 90% of all uh, precincts reporting. Jenna, 90%. We're in the lead. 90% reporting, and we are almost 10% above Peggy Niebergall. So we, yeah. Uh, but honestly, it's 19 people. Like, that's the difference. This race is bigger than just the people in this room, I think. You know, we love Wheeling because we love the idea of what this city can be, I think. So thank you guys for being here. Win, lose, or draw, mostly win. Um, 
I'm super. To rosemary. Uh, yeah. To wheeling. Oh, yay! Hi. And it, looked, and it looks like you won. Oh my God, that's exciting. Did you already know, did you already know this? I did not. I, I'm getting the call right now. I hear the people screaming inside. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Bye. Ah, did we win? What? That's good. That's good. 100%? 100%? And by quite a bit, I think. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, that was the intelligence surgeon just called me and they said, Madam Ketchum, I don't know if you've heard, but I think you've won. Um, so. Over 10%, dude. Can you say you've won again? I think I've won. I think you won. I think I won the race. Oh! <laughs> So scared. <laughs> no, I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Um, and for me, the, one of the most exciting parts is having access now. Is that you get to be in the room where it happens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the most important thing. It's like when you it's like when you mix a bunch of ingredients together and you're like, this is going to be. S and then you're like, actually, this tastes great. Why why is this the best thing I've ever eaten? No, but it's one of those things where you do have all of that, you know, potential guilt because you created this whole thing and you feel responsible. So, nevertheless, here we are. Nevertheless, she persisted. Rosemary Ketchum is a brand new council member and she's also a first time politician, never ran for office. And of course, running for office during a pandemic is new anyway. Uh, in a four person race, she was ahead all night. Rosemary, thanks for being with us so late. What are your thoughts now? I'm incredibly excited. Yeah, you know, I'm uh, incredibly grateful to have run uh, a really, really good uh, and uh, energetic campaign. Uh, wow. And you know, tonight City we get to Council. see the results of that. You have we, we here. Started from the bottom. Now we're in the middle. Oh my God! Honestly, you have no idea. <laughs> it feels so. I so I. You guys couldn't tell, but I was nervous. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I was, I you, you, you guys had like, no so idea what's going on. I know I seemed cool, but I was a little <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Realizing that I could be defined solely based on, you know, my gender identity was uncomfortable. I was like, that's not what I want well, at all. And if a person wants to run just because they're a protected class or whatever, that's not enough. It's just not enough, you know? If I were to just run because I was trans, it would be inauthentic and, and rude. It would just be rude <laughs> because it's unfair for somebody to try to represent a, a bunch of people when they really only care about themselves. I, Rosemary Ketchum. I, Rosemary Ketchum. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of West Virginia. The Constitution of the State of West Virginia. And the Charter of the City of Wheeling, West Virginia. And the Charter of the City of Wheeling, West Virginia. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. As a member of council of the City of Wheeling. As a member of council of the City of Wheeling. To the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> there are so many examples of powerful and unapologetic leadership from people who are uh, very unique. We, we need the most diverse representation we could possibly get. And that only happens when diverse people decide to run. Do you know what I mean? We can't expect the white majority to decide to be diverse. <laughs> That's not how it works. We can't expect the cis majority to decide to be diverse. Uh, I'm incredibly privileged to be sitting in this chair and to help shape the future of the friendly city. For years I've been working throughout the state of West Virginia advocating for issues like racial justice, criminal justice, poverty, mental health, and LGBTQ equality. Issues that matter greatly to me and the folks in our community. And as I'm sure you're aware, we are witnessing a national uprising, uh, perhaps the greatest civil rights movement of the 21st century. 
Uh, the voices demanding racial justice, economic justice, police reform, and equality are not temporary, they are not new, and they are not going away anytime soon. It is incumbent on our city government to re-examine and reform our own institutions so that we can lead the charge in promoting justice and equality unconditionally with not just our words, but our actions. Boys, wouldn't it be something if I could make the sun rise Before the cold, dark, anxious morning arrives If I could take the reins to tame the vicious beasts I ride If I could stop and start time without warning If I never admit I could do such things Would those things go undone And if I could ease my grip from what I desire most Would what I desire more easily come I could whip up a storm and blow the whole world off its heels. From West Virginia Public Broadcasting.